Hear this from Zenkai Shibayama. Silently a flower blooms. In silence it falls away. Yet here now in this moment at this place, the whole of the flower, the whole of the world is blooming. This is the talk of the flower, the truth of the blossom, the glory of eternal life is fully shining here. Welcome to Harp and Healing. In this second of the most glorious springs I've beheld in our lives, it's as if God is saying, I cannot quell all of the anxiety that you are feeling in this time, but I can offer you this beauty, this metaphor, this fragrance, this song. Our hopes we bring for ourselves for others, for the ways of the world, for our human being and divine existence within and without. We honor in silence and music and sacred presence as we listen in longing and love. Like the iris, we open ourselves to a resting spot in ours, a path, a healing journey. We invite you to come at any time to the jar at the door 
and write the name or the intention that you might want spoken out loud as we will hold it sacredly in community. We invite you to come and light a candle in this cloud of witnesses for hope for the contents of your heart. And in this evening, we thank Maria Trevor for the exquisite gift that she brings to us in the harp. May this music and this time that you have set aside to meditate and gather bring a blend with your hearts for healing and hope to touch the places of ache and longing, to bathe them in serenity and beauty. With gratitude for their gifts, we invite and open ourselves to healing power. So come just as you are, without pretense or expectation. Be present. Be.
It is an intentional and practiced soul that can come before the throne of grace without one plea. Hear this poetry from E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and the blue true dream of skyland and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is, yes, I who have died am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life, of love, and wings, of the gay, great, happening, illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any, lifted from the no of all nothing, human merely being, doubt, unimaginable you. Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are opened. May we think of these things, the beauty of the earth, the things that we see and are gifted to us as we empty our minds of any plea and open our ears to hear the hope of God. Choose a sacred word. Posture yourself in a way that you will not be distracted. And when you are, and you will, be distracted by even the lovely bird song that manages its way in, gently push it aside. And as you listen and watch for what God has to say for you, to you, in this eventide. Receive the gift of silence.
Oh, thank you, God. Ken Geyer has a book named Windows of the Soul. And in it, he invites us to consider things through the interior, soul-filled window of our beings. In one of these chapters, he asks us to consider the way of art in a threefold manner. The piece of art that he illustrates is Vincent van Gogh's irises. He admits that upon first seeing the actual painting, he was unimpressed. Perhaps he was looking for the van Gogh starry night or the renowned sunflowers or the wheat fields or the chiseled faces of those that Van Gogh first went to in the mining community that were gaunt and exhausted. For it was there that he was sent as a new minister, somewhat awkward, gawky, to minister to these people in this mining community. But it took his breath to see them, and so he painted them, he drew them. And in his life, which was tormented, maybe inherited by a mother's moods who were also tormented, she too, being an artist, inspired him. And as he painted, he is the only or the most renowned portraitist who painted himself more than 30 times. He would say it's because in his poverty, for he only ever sold one painting in his lifetime, he could not afford a model to come and let him practice. While in his spirit, he thought the future of art was in portraits. And so it was himself that he examined and painted and probably examined and painted. But when he lost his sanity, he was in an asylum and out the window of his room in a garden, he could see the iris both upright and exhausted. And someone brought him an easel and watercolors, and he began to paint. And in painting the irises, his sanity was restored. Now, Ken Geyer would say it takes our knowing of this story to have a relationship with the irises. And the threefold admonition that he would ask us to consider is what is the heart and the intention of the artist? What is the gift and the knowing of the one who looks on? And what is the delight of God that knows that in our duplicating or replicating the beautiful flower that we cannot create in paint that has the power to restore us in considering the artist, your personal viewpoint, and the delight of God.
as many of you know, it was by his own hand that Vincent van Gogh's life came to an end. He would never know or realize that his portrait of the irises would be sold as one of the all-time most valuable paintings for over $53 million. Yet what is the worth of a life? And how do we realize the value and the beauty of the gift of this day, this birthday of the sun, and our time herein? And whose names do you offer in celebration and longing, in mourning, for us to ring into this night? And for all who find torment in their spirits, that they might be led to the lap of God where they know their beauty and belovedness. We name Bill. We name the need for emotional healing. We pray for Bob, who will have a long-needed operation. May his back on Thursday receive healing. We name and pray Todd. For Brayden. For Samantha. For Allison. Receive our hearts, O oh God. Our tears are shaped like tiny seeds. They fall at the feet of God, who knows what has provoked them what has brought them. We are a being of a miraculous power to shed our sorrows, our anxiety, our fears in the salting of the earth. Hear this from Psalm 126. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. We name these and the ones in our hearts for whom we pray. We pause for any others that will be spoken in this moment. In sacred keeping, we speak.
The world needs our prayers and our love. In the words of St. Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body now on the earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which to look at Christ's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good, and yours are the hands with which he is to bless us now. Hold your hands and offer a blessing to the world which God so loved, to Christ who came and overcame the world. May this blessing be so for us and for all. Amen.
We offer this from Father Richard Rohr, a thought for embracing our suffering and woundedness that we recognize God there with us too. Our God who poured herself into the creation of all that exists is subject to risk, to being fractured and torn just as we are. The knowledge and experience of God's solidarity and union with us is profoundly healing and can alter the sequel of trauma so as not to become repetitive and recurrent. God desires closeness to all closeness to all our experience, naked and raw in its particularity and commonality by providing a safe dwelling place. God defeats the horror of our lives. God catches up our trauma and weaves the horror-filled participation into a relationship of beatific intimacy. When we recognize God in our own narrative, there is no wound so deep that God cannot heal. And so we pray. In the breathing in of you, Creator, love. We cleanse our bodies of the tensions and fatigue that would keep us down. With the raising of our breath, we welcome the newness of air that holds and inflates our spirit. Here in the fullness of exchanged breath, we hold and are held. Breathe in love. Breathe out more love. We listen to the cascading pour of love in and through us.
God is not a being among other beings, but rather the ground of being itself, which then flows through all beings. God is not far from us, but it is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. From the book of Acts. Nothing humans can do can stop the relentless outpouring force that is the divine dance. Love does not lose, nor does God lose. That is what it means to be God. May this evening have lifted us in a place of holiness and holiness of healing. May we receive it. May it be so in the moments that we have held with this outpouring of heart and beauty. Amen.